Hello, I'm Melanie Kyles and today I'm going to be showing you how to do your very own hand embroidered neuron design for the Hatton Gallery in association with the Can Do Project. This workshop is suitable for all different types of skill levels, so whether you're just starting with embroidery or whether you have a little bit more experience, this is for you and is to also help engage people with the Can Do Project which is like an optogenetic treatment for epilepsy for those who don't respond to regular treatment. So the first thing that you need to do is to trace your designs. So you should have in your pack an instruction sheet with a design on it. So that design is actually set for the size of your hoop. And you should also have some dressmakers tracing paper, which you can use to then trace off the design, which is what you're gonna to use to stitch through. Next step, is to prepare your hoop you unscrew so it actually separates in two you have a slightly smaller one on the inside you want to lay that on the table in front of you place your fabric on top the screw actually tightens and loosens the outside hoop you want to get it so it's not stretching your fabric too much but it's also keeping it taut so once you've got it on basically it should be flat not stretched and it's almost got a drum like sort of tension so you can see there that's right in the middle there if you need to pause this video at any time that's absolutely fine you can pause and rewind at any step as often as you like once your fabric is securely in your hoop you only use the pins provided to attach your design flat against the fabric you can see here I'm taking a little bit of time just to kind of make sure that it's flat. This video is sped up so this is obviously not me doing this in real time so you can take a little bit of time over this. It's actually going to make the embroidery much easier if you're able to have your design flat against the fabric. Once you're ready to start stitching you'll have to choose your thread. So I'm starting off with this luminous yellow. Um, each embroidery thread actually has six strands to a thread, as you can see here. So I'm just gently separating them at the end, holding both ends in my left hand and using my right hand just gently to untwist that. That's the best way I've found to separate the threads without them all getting tangled. You just do it bit by bit, just really slowly. For using your needle threader, for those of you who've not used one or might want to use one, you can see here I'm just inserting the diamond tip through the eye of the needle and then putting the thread through the diamond tip and I'm pulling it all the way through the eye of the needle and it actually pulls the thread with it so threads your needle. What I would say is that these are quite delicate so you might want to sort of hold the base of the diamond tip rather than pull from the end of the needle threader itself. Once you've threaded your needle and you've got the width of thread that you want, I'm just gonna put a double knot in here and then you're ready to stitch. So the first stitch that I'm gonna show you is a back stitch. What I tend to do to start off, there's a few different ways of starting off your embroidery. But if you actually start from the front, so the knot is on the front, and you cover that with your embroidery, that can then later be cut off or it can be covered over and you get a really seamless finish. So you can see here I've started from the front and then I'm coming back up where I actually want the embroidery to start and I'm just doing a simple stitch one side or the other. For back stitch, you move in the direction of where you want your stitch to go and then you bring your needle back down to meet the end of the previous stitch. So you can see that I'm going over the knot, I will trim this off later just because the thread's quite thin but you can see there I'm following the line and then I'm doing a back stitch to meet the end of the previous stitch. Do it again there. So going forward and then back to meet the end of the previous line. So this is a really lovely stitch if you want to do any text, any drawn work. 
Essentially, if you want to do any line work with thread, this is just like a really simple seamless stitch that you can do. ready to tie off I'm just gonna get that, catch that little loop on the back there um, sometimes your thread might actually just slip out of your needle which can happen if you're towards the end of your thread and there's not much left so you've got to be extra careful what I like to do just to get again just like a really flat tidy back is to loop around a stitch a few times then to actually thread that needle around the loops that you've just created so you can see here I'm actually just pushing this through the threads it's quite tight but you can kind of flatten it a little bit there with your thumb as you're pulling it taut and then obviously just trim the end of it so you haven't got that loose thread and then that is essentially your first lot of embroidery so this can also be used obviously on all sorts of part of the design, it's completely up to you. You can always just watch these again, but I'm just going to take you through the different stitches. This one here is satin stitch, so this is a really good one if you want to do small blocks of colour. It doesn't work great on huge surface areas, but if you've got quite a small area that you want a really nice smooth silky block finish, then this is the stitch for that. So you can see again, I've just started right in the centre there. What I like to do with satin stitch, and to be honest quite a lot of embroidery stitches, is if you've got something symmetrical, especially if it's circular like this, is actually to start in the centre and to work your way outwards. That way you're not going from right to left, or left to right, um, where you've got that risk of either something getting slightly bigger, slightly smaller towards the end. This gives you a more even finish. Essentially what it is, is a series of very close stitches together. So if you know a straight stitch, it's just lots of straight stitches side by side. And you can see here, I'm just following the line. So I'm coming up at the top point and down at the bottom point. There will become a point where you get towards the end of the curve and you do just want quite a small stitch there. Um, once you've filled that area, you want to go back to the centre and work outwards to the other side as well. simple back stitch here just to illuminate that lightning bolt I'm gonna be adding little highlights in with the neon thread but having that contrast is something that I wanted to do so I'm also using a slightly thicker thread to do this one because it's actually a bigger design with a lot less detail you can afford to go slightly bigger with your thread
next stitch that I'm going to teach you is a simple fill-in stitch called seed stitch. What it is, is a series of small stitches that are packed tightly together in alternate directions. If you imagine hundreds and thousands that like you would get on an ice cream, it looks very similar to that. These can either be done in one colour or you could actually use a series of different colours and it's a nice decorative fill and stitch that can be done in quite a quick time period. It could be used for backgrounds and you can see here it just offers like a different type of effect to this hat and stitch. As you can see with this stitch you don't have to be too precious as long as there's an even space between your stitches, it doesn't matter what direction they're going, this is a really nice mindful stitch to practice and as you can see it offers just like a really lovely effect as well. stitch that I'm going to show you as part of this video is called straight stitch. It's very similar to what you were doing with satin stitch however it can be used a lot more freely. You can see here that I'm just using it to line the edge of the lightning bolt just to give that pop of colour. You can actually use it a lot more freely so similar to seed stitch which you've just learned. You can actually use straight stitch in any direction that you want. It's quite a free stitch. It's like a little bit messier than backstitch, you can be a bit more expressive with it. So obviously because of the style of my embroidery I've done this quite neatly but like sort of quite sort of controlled whereas you might actually decide to be a bit more expressive with it. You might decide to kind of do something a little bit more abstract than what I've done, it's completely up to you. You can obviously follow the design as it is or you can actually add in your own embellishments and put your own style on it. But you can see there, just the final, final pop of colour just really works. So obviously my embroidery is not finished and I haven't followed the whole design but for the purpose of this video I'm going to show you just how to actually remove your paper. I'm just tearing this away here, it should just easily tear away without damaging your embroidery. So you do want to go slowly, you don't want to pull on your threads, but the paper should be weak enough so that it does tear away easily. You'll find that some of the tighter stitches, such as the seed stitch and some of the tighter back stitches here, like there is dropped paper, so what I'm doing there is just using the tip of my needle just to loosen off them little bits of paper without damaging the embroidery. This might take a little bit of time, so it's worth taking your time over, but obviously once it's done, it's totally worth it. stage if you did want to keep it in the embroidery hoop to frame it is to finish it off. So the fabric has deliberately been cut into a circular shape so that this is quite easy to do at home if this is what you want to do. And what I'm doing is a simple run and stitch just using some of the embroidery floss. So you can see that it's simply going in and out. You're just weaving the thread from one side of the other around the edge of the fabric. You want to make sure that you don't go too close to the edge. With it being unhemmed, it could fray if you were too close. So you can see that I've left just under a centimetre and I'm pulling the fabric as I go. And you can see it's already starting to gather, so it pulls the fabric round to the back of the hoop. 
once you've done this you want to secure again with a double knot and if you want to hang this you can use some ribbon or some string so there you have it your finished embroidery and thank you so much for taking part and for watching i hope you've enjoyed it and we would love to see your work so if you'd like to share on social media on instagram please tag us at hatton underscore newcastle can do ncl melanie kyles and if you'd like to find out more about the project go and visit candu.ac.uk